Well, hello. Howdy, hi, and shalom. And welcome to Branches of Yah. Another presentation today that I might get to show you some of our Heavenly Father's Word. It is so beautiful and it is so perfect. And today we're going to be talking about remove your sandals or your shoes. As in Musha when he went up to the mountain on Mount Sinai and he was in the presence. And we're going to look, take a little deeper dive. Now I have not forgotten any of you that have asked me to do other things. I have been just kind of busy. I am getting to it. And I will bring forth some of the stuff that I was asked to. And I am so excited to find out that so many more people have subscribed. Because it gives me hope that people are looking into his word. And they're they're really looking for the truth. They're not just looking for something that, you know, somebody to lead them and guide them. But they are looking into his word, into his Torah. And they're reading it for themselves. So I always encourage that. Stay in prayer. Stay thankful. Always pray for your brethren. And pray for our leaders, even if you don't like them or agree with them, because you know the secular world is so awful. But that's the whole point of it, isn't it? So so let's get right into it. And let's take a look at uh, what he told Moshe and why he told him that. And this will be a short little video, and I hope you get something out of it. Like, subscribe, and share. Share the word with everyone you meet, everywhere you go. It is so important. It's so important in any days. Because we don't know if we have tomorrow. You don't know if we have tomorrow. That's the whole point of it. Let's not be looking for the last day for everybody, but let's look at every day as a chance, another opportunity to tell somebody about the word, tell somebody about his love and about his son's love so that maybe they too will take a look. Let's take the teachings of men and the religiosity out of it and the know-it-alls and everybody else is all... They, they've got something that nobody else has. And let's go back into his word and find out for ourselves because it's a personal relationship that you have with him. When you look into his word, he introduces himself. It's a handshake that belongs to you. And then we gather together and we share those things with one another. It's quite beautiful. All right, so let's go take a look. And we are going to be remove your shoes or your sandals. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and leave. You don't need me here for this. All right. So we have remove your sandals, which is sha'al na'alecha. Now that's the Hebrew word study is remove your sandals. Sha'al na'alecha. And as you see, it's a shin lamed. That's remove. Nunayin lamed yad kaf. Okay. So it's. Remove your sandals or your shoes during worship. Hmm. Is this necessary? Well, let's take a look. In Shemoth or Exodus 3 5, and he said, Do not come near here. Take your sandals off your feet, for the place in which you are standing is set apart ground. Now that means it is most Kadesh, it is most separate. Some people tend to remove their shoes as they worship. Some may just have tight fitting shoes and want some relief. And others feel that it might bring them closer to Elohim. They feel that they are standing on Kadesh ground and should not wear their shoes. And if this is your way of worshiping Elohim, uh, who am I to question you? It is, after all, scriptural, as we see in Shemoth or Exodus 3.5. When Moshe approaches the burning bush and Elohim commands him to remove his shoes for he is on Kodesh ground, we find a similar account in Yahusha 5.15, and you might know that as Joshua or Yahshua, but it uh, it's where a heavenly messenger, a Malachim, visits Yahusha, Yahshua, and instructs him to remove his shoes because he is on Kodesh ground. Although this is not true in every case, Elohim appeared to Abraham and he was not commanded to remove his shoes. It is interesting that according to Yehudi law and tradition, it is preferable that a person walks with some separation between their foot and the ground, even if it's a pair of socks or a slipper. I read something interesting in the Talmud in uh, Shabbat 129a. And one should always sell even the beams of his house to buy shoes for his feet. So why is this wearing shoes commanded in one respect and not in another? Well, the answer is not in the footwear. It's in the difference in the essence of the ground. 
The ground was cursed by Elohim in Barashith or Genesis 3.17. And this isn't the full verse, and that's because there's so much in that verse, and we'll, we'll tackle that at another time. And unto Adam he said, Because you have listened, heard, and acted, Shema, according to the voice of your wife, and have eaten of the tree which I commanded you, saying, You do not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of disobedience. In sorrow it will bring forth thistles and thorns. Of it you shall consume. Now, obviously, there's more about the green herb and, and, and the sweat of your brow in there. Um, and it's not that he's eating the thorns and thistles are trials and tribulations the difficulties. But we, like I said, there's so much in this verse that oftentimes it's completely skipped over. It's so beautiful. His word is so beautiful. Guys, please get in there and dig it out for yourselves. The sorrow and the toils all the days of your life. Shoes or footwear create a separation from the flesh to the ground. It is metaphoric and a literal sense. And it should be a constant reminder that we are to be detached from earthliness, to be spiritually separated from the things of this world. Uh, before I go on, I want to talk about that just a little bit. That we oftentimes think of the spiritual realm as this ethereal, wispy, ghost-like thing. And that the spiritual realm is like see-through, like cellophane, but with like like wind, and it's it's just not true. Uh, the spiritual realm, we are the shadow. If you think about that, Yah in his spiritual realm, his kingdom, that he is the light. He and his son, the Lamb, are the light, and that their light casts a shadow. The shadow is what we live in. Now, I'm not telling you this is exactly. I'm just giving you an analogy here. But we are the shadow. And if you've ever looked at your shadow, it doesn't look exactly like you. Okay, it, it can be very long and tall and thin and it can be distorted. It can be short and squatty and and it could look nothing like you. Okay, and that's exactly what's happened. The shadow, the world that was supposed to be a reflection of the kingdom has become this distorted shadow of darkness. And your shadows are always dark. They're not a reflection. They're a shadow. We've become a shadow of darkness, a very distorted image of what we were supposed to be. And I just wanted to throw that in there so that because oftentimes people say this is all spiritual now. or and, and, and yes, it is. But to understand that that's the real, that's what's tangible. That's what you can touch, see and feel. When you're walking in his presence, when you're in his word, when you're loving him, when you're putting him first, that becomes so real to you that this world is like you're trapped in a horrible video game that you just can't get out of. And it becomes so fake and phony and you see it and you realize, oh my gosh, I am in like a holographic world. Anyways, I wanted to throw that in there. But then where Elohim created a place of Kodeshah, a highly and most separate, it would be the opposite that you would want your flesh to touch the ground, which was made Kodesh by Elohim. So, what, what makes something Kodesh? Kodesh is a Hebrew word for set apart, which means separation, to be utterly and totally apart. That is beyond or above the range of normal or merely physical human experience. Why did Moshe remove his shoes on Mount Sinai? Why did Moshe remove his shoes on the ground? Elohim commanded Moshe to remove his sandals or shoes on Kodesh ground. But if you go deeper, you will find even more. Remove the shoes from your feet. Now let's look at those three words. Remove shoes and feet. And see if we have a little commentary found in the root of these words. Now, the word for remove is shal, from the root of shilela. Now, that's shilela, which means to deny the existence of something, as seen in the shin lamed. Okay, that's the shin lamed you saw in the beginning of shal. Now, shin is to cut or separate or destroy, and the lamed is the staff or the authority. And it is a picture of destroying the authority or separating ourselves from the worldly. The word for shoe is na'al, which comes from the root of na'la, which means to lock or hold captive. 
Then the word for feet is ragleja, and that is from the root regalut, which means a habit or a custom. So what Elohim is saying is remove your shoes from your feet, is to remove the lock, the habits and customs that hold you captive from experiencing the most esteemed presence, the kabod, by shedding and denying the existence of this natural world. So if you are in the habit of removing your shoes during a worship service, aside from your usual reasons for doing so, it might not be a bad idea to also think that at that moment in your worship and praise to Elohim, you are removing yourself from the natural world and you are denying its existence in your life to receive the full experience of the presence of Elohim. Isn't that beautiful? Just remove itself is cutting away or destroying that connection you have to the worldly because it is not the world we're fighting against. It is not the world that we are looking to attain. This is the thing we're looking to shed. So just the word remove shawl itself. And I didn't get into all the other words because this would have been very long, but I wanted to just bring that forth. So let's remove our sandals and come into the presence of Elohim. Let's shed the worldly things, the things that disconnect us from Him. What is separating you right now? What is separating any of us? Let's look as we're coming into uh, the Pesach week, the Hag Masut. As we're coming into that, looking to get rid of that leaven, let's find out what it is in our life that we still hold on to, our traditions and our habits and the things that we still do and make excuses for that are separating us from the presence of Yah. What right now would you never do in His presence? Because if you want to be in His presence weekly or during His uh, modims, there's something. There's something each and every one of us. And don't get, don't get it twisted that there's only just one thing and that's the thing we need to work on. There's tons. So let's remove our shoes, our metaphorical shoes. That which separates us from the Most High in His most Kodesh place, the Kodesh Shah. Let's remove that barrier between us so that we might come into his presence, that we might feel him in our lives and that we might really change this world that we're living in right now. If not just for us, for our brethren, for the friends and family out there that are scared, the friends and family out there that don't know what's going on, that have no idea of what's coming in their lives and don't know how to handle it. Let them see us as a light. Let's remove our shoes. Thank you guys. We love you. We love the Most High and we're always praying for you. Please pray for us and know that one day we won't have to remove our shoes because we'll be in His presence. Thank you guys.